Hey guys, welcome to our first instructional video here at Flip with Jade. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about, or today, whenever, this morning, whenever you're watching this, we're going to be talking about how to replace a piece of casing. And now casing is a word that we use to describe this piece of trim around the door. So when we case a door, we're putting trim around it. So, um, yeah, I have a friend of mine who has some pet damage on a piece of casing on one of the doors at her house. And coincidentally, I also have this piece of casing here that um, has some pet damage. When we first got our second cat a couple weeks ago, we had to keep him in our guest room here so that the cats can get used to each other's scents and whatnot. And, you know, cats are so fucking weird and finicky. So um, we locked him in here and he got upset one night and started scratching at the door trim. And here in Southern California, we use um, things, uh, a material called MDF, which is basically just like compressed sawdust. And it is shit basically so a cat's nails can easily scratch through it um back on the east coast we use a lot more wood and uh they can still damage that too so i think it's a pretty common problem um so yeah that's what we're tackling today so i'm getting something done in my apartment you guys are getting something done in your house so it's cool so we're first going to start with uh our utility knives and it's super important whether you're doing this inside or outside to cut the caulk that is um, along the edge. A lot of times we caulk the joint here that's along the jam of the door. The jam is the piece of wood that the door sits against. Um, so we're gonna cut that. And we're also gonna cut the caulk on the other side um, because when you start to rip it off, if you don't cut it, it's going to rip the sheetrock or the siding if it's outside. And you don't want that because that's just going to be a whole nother thing that you have to repair. So um, if you're doing siding, you want to make sure you cut down and under. If you have clapboard siding, which is just the siding, if that makes any sense to you. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to do that. And I hope you can see me. The lighting's a little weird in here. So I'm just going to start at the top and use a decent amount of pressure. And a sharp blade is pretty important as well. All the way to the bottom. Maybe on the bottom, you want to start from the bottom and go up a little bit. Maybe you want to do it twice, uh, you, you know, better than once. So we'll just do it again. Down, down, down. Oh, and my blade just slid actually behind my piece of trim. So that's good news. That means that the caulk has broken free. Um, and the bottom here. Oh. Um, I have a little piece of baseboard, and so we're going to cut the caulk along the baseboard too. So it's one last thing to fix later. When we're fixing things, we don't want to make a bigger mess, right? So we're going to go over the top and do it on the inside. And go slow. If you're going hard and fast that's what she said um sometimes you can veer off and just make a bigger mess so we'll go from the bottom here go like that all right and another thing you want to do, bear with me, my technology skills are a little, you know, shitty. So we're going to go on the top joint here, 
and we'll cut that too. Once again, nice and slow. And if you do veer off onto the other piece and it makes a cut mark, don't worry about it. Um, there's actually a term that we say sometimes and it says, cock and paint makes me the carpenter I ain't. Car uh, cock and paint can really hide a lot of things. So if you veer off a little bit or whatever, it's not a big deal. Don't get frustrated. So now that we've cut it all, we are going to use um, use a little flat bar, um, something like this. Uh, sometimes a smaller flat bar might be fine for what we're doing here. This is a pretty small, easy piece of trim. Um, if you're doing this outside on a um, thicker piece of trim, sometimes they call it a brick mold. Sometimes they use some pretty diesel nails to nail those in, so it might be a little tougher to get those off. Uh, one thing that I would tell you is don't try too hard to, don't pry like, don't pry like this on the sheetrock. You'll bust the hole in the sheetrock and um, that'll really suck. Um, so... And, and try not to pry on the jam either. Uh, you're just going to try to pry behind where the trim is, if that makes any sense. So we're going to go here and um, you can see that. So we're going to take our flat bar here and we're going to put it right where behind the, the trim and take our hammer and just bang into it like that and just kind of pry up um if you're doing this on an inside piece of casing to the camera here um if you're doing this on an inside piece of casing they normally come off very easy um we use something called trim nails which i'll talk about in a couple minutes and um so they come off pretty easy the the effort it takes to take them off is uh, pretty easy, but if you're doing it outside on the outside trim, sometimes those are a little tougher, so you have to put a little, little back into it, you know? So we're just gonna go like that. So now we don't, we don't really need our hammer, um, because we've pried it open a little bit. So you'll just work your way up and just kind of try to keep your flat bar uh, behind where the casing will cover. So we'll just pry up like that, pry up. And you know, it's always a good idea to, as you're prying up, just, just do a little check in on the sheetrock and, or the siding and, and make sure that it's not starting to pull the paint or the sheetrock off. So we'll just keep going up. We'll check, I cut it pretty good, so. Feeling pretty confident about that. We'll go up and up and up, and we'll move our camera up like that. And we'll go up, up. We'll check in, up, up, and like that. So now we got to the top, and it's uh, all the nails on this uh, lateral piece are now free, but sometimes the corner will still be connected. So you're going to want to take the piece and pry it away from the corner like that. And maybe you'll have to pry it back a little bit and that's like that. Because sometimes they nail the corners to each other, which we will do later when we reinstall this piece. Um, so that just ensures that we're not going to mess up the top piece as well because I only bought enough to do one piece. So there's our garbage piece. Um, sometimes the nails come with it, like here. And we're just gonna bend them over like that. Um, if they're harder nails, you'll use a hammer to bend them over. Bending nails over is super important. <clears throat> um, I've, I've stepped on a nail before and it really sucks. It, I mean, 
hurting your feet in general just sucks. I mean, you need them to walk, right? So you just want to bend the nails over just so nobody gets cut, nobody gets hurt. Um, so yeah. So then now our piece of casing is off and you will notice that nine times out of 10, you will still see some nails. Normally the nails uh, stick in the jam because uh, it's tough wood, so they didn't get pulled out and that's no big deal. So we are gonna use our dikes, which is a tool I talked about in my introduction to hand tools video, which if you haven't watched, that's a great video to kind of refer you back to some little hand tools that we will use, I use every single day. So we're gonna use our dikes and um, they open like that. And you're gonna wanna grab the nail. If the nail is like this, use my finger as an example. Uh, you wanna grab it like that and pry down like that. And it'll pull the nail right out, super easy. So we'll just pull all those. Sometimes you have to re-grab the nail. It doesn't come out on one time. So we'll just pull these nails whistle while you work I think that's uh, one of the coolest things about my job is that we get to listen to music all day um, which is really nice I love music it keeps me going I think it's nice to kind of pump you up you know so we'll pull all the nails like that there's a nail left in the top corner here, so we'll just pry that out nicely. And yeah, we got uh, we have a caulk line left on the jam of our door here, left over. So um, I'm just going to put these leftover nails in my pouch here, because it's a garbage can sometimes. So I'm going to take my knife here, and we'll use, let's get a new blade. nice new blade these knives are really cool because they have these little storage facilities in them and you can store some of them actually store like up to 10 blades which is kind of cool mine only stores like five or six but anyways we're going to use a brand new blade make sure it's nice and clean which i'm sure yours will be because it won't be in your dusty pouch like mine was and we're just gonna run our blade oh, you know what we're gonna open the door might be a little easier when the door is open. Might see a cat or two, but you know. So we'll open the door like that. And we're gonna run our blade up just like that, just to get the hard edge away. Just so when we put our piece back on, it lays tight to the jam and we won't need as much fun. All right, got a little more cough on the rug than I intended. You can always put a drop cough down if you have nice floors. I recommend that. I have a carpet that hides most stains, so yeah. So anyways, uh, that's taking it off. So now, close our door. See, we have a cat. Oh, this is Petey. Say hi, Petey. He was the one who scratched the casing, so he's cute. That's why I'm not mad. So now we're going to take the camera and put it so you're not staring at my nose, and we're going to measure the piece. So we'll take your tape measure and put it down to the ground, run it up the wall, and So we're going to measure to the long point of the top piece, right? So we have here 82 and three quarters. 
So from the ground to this point here is what we're going to cut. <clears throat> Make sure you, you're really butted to the ground. Your tape is super straight. You don't have any kinks or twists in it because you don't want it to be too short. It will look really stupid if it's up off the ground or if it's down from that piece. You want your joints to be very pretty. Um, so yeah, 82 and 3 quarters. We're going to write that right here. Make sure you write it. Or you can write it on a piece of wood or a piece of paper so you can take it with you. Actually, you know, I think we have a piece of paper around here somewhere. There we go. I have a tendency to forget numbers. I get a large amount of numbers thrown at me every day. I'm normally the cut girl. So I like to have a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood that I can always write my numbers down on so that I don't go to my saw and say, oh shit, what did he just tell me? And then I have to go back and be like, hey bud, what was that number? And then he has to remeasure it and it's a whole thing. And you don't want to cut it wrong. So we're going to write it down, 82 three quarters to the long point. So I wrote that there. I think it's backwards, but I wrote two LP, which means long point. So now we're going to take an adventure down to the garage and cut our piece. So yay, power tools. Um, I'm not, oh, I can pause it here. So be right back. All right, we're back. We are down in our garage now, <clears throat> and here I have set up this power tool, which is called many things. We call it a chop saw, a chop box, a miter saw, there's many names for it. Um, it's an amazing tool to have. A lot of the projects that we're going to be doing here on this channel, I definitely recommend having one of these. You can make all of these cuts with a simple skill saw, but it's never going to look as clean as if you use a chop saw. Um, so this one we have here costs a couple hundred dollars. If that's not something that you feel like investing in, you can go to this store called Harbor Freight. Uh, we have some here in Southern California. I know that they're was at least one or two in California. Just Google it on your phone, you'll find it. They have a lot of cheaper tools, um, which for homeowners or uh, people who are doing smaller projects like this, that would be totally fine. Uh, for us who are everyday users of tools like this, we tend to stay away from uh, the cheaper side of things. <clears throat> so here it is, chop saw. It can cut angles. Uh, we have a little lock here, and you move it right or left, it'll cut any angle you want, um, up to 50 degrees, or the other side goes to 60, and it can also, some of them can also, go this way, or that way. Um, which we would call a bevel. So for this project, we're going to be simple. We're at a zero degree bevel, and all the cuts on the casing that we are replacing are going to be at 45 degree angles. So if you think about it, where we have a 90 degree angle, this is the top of our door, this is the side of our door, this is a 90 degree angle, so half of that, which is what we are cutting, will be 45 degrees. So we are measuring to the long point of a 45 degree angle. So yeah, we'll just keep it there. <laughs> so what I normally like to do is um, <clears throat> you're going to stand your piece up. You're going to look at it. Uh, buying your material sometimes can be a little tough if you just bought the house or you didn't build the house or you rent like I do. Um, you don't know exactly maybe what your trim is and they have so many different ones and some of them are 
so similar to another one, but they're different. <clears throat> so a lot of times, uh, if you know that you're going to be taking the piece off, obviously, you can take it off before you go to the store, cut a little piece off of the old one. This is not the old one. This is the new one. Um, but cut a little piece off of the old one and bring it with you to the store. That way you know you're getting the exact right piece. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a store and been like, oh, is it this one or is it this one? It's so close. I don't know. And I bought the wrong one. So that's just a waste of time. So just bring a little piece of it with you. So what I like to do, you're going to stand it up like this. We know that our piece is going to go this way on the door. So that piece is on the floor. So we're going to square up the bottom. Um, if you're doing this outside, you like to keep the wood off of the ground. So you're not going to butt the wood all the way to the ground because then the wood can soak up the water that from when it rains or snows or whatever. Um, and then it'll start rotting the piece and you'll just have to replace it again. So if you're doing it outside, keep it, you know, you can kind of gauge it. Sometimes you will look at the old piece and see how much that one was off the ground and maybe like make a little mark so that you know where to measure from when you uh, do the new one. So for this one, we're doing it inside, so I'm just butting it on the ground. So we're going to cut a square cut on the bottom. We want it to look nice when it sits against the floor, so we're just going to cut a square cut. When you make a square cut, you just want to cut just the hair off, just to make sure it's square. You don't want to cut six inches off your piece because then it might be too short. Um, small little tip for some of you ladies or you men with long hair, um, always keep your hair up. I always keep mine in a braid because it keeps it from getting knotty. I tend to have knotty hair. Um, I like to wear a hat so that the dust doesn't always get all in my hair. Um, this is not a super dusty project. It's not like you're cut and trim all day. So um, just braid it, keep it back. I know um, I have a friend might watch this and she actually got her hair stuck in a sawzall and it sucked her hair right in and she has this beautiful long hair and um it was really quite a bummer her husband took it all apart for her so she saved her beautiful long hair so props to him for that um but to avoid that braid it put it up in a bun these saws have air that sucks the blade around and around and around and it's so easy for even you know this little piece of hair could sometimes be dangerous if your face is too close to it and you don't want that to happen it could be tragic for you for the tool um so yeah anyways we're gonna square up the bottom of this piece oh another tip glasses safety glasses are so important when you're cutting wood up any kind. I, ugh, I've gotten so much wood stuck in my eye. I thankfully used to work for an eye doctor and he had inverted my eyelid two or three times, which was so stupid because I should have just worn glasses. And maybe sometimes you are wearing glasses um, and sometimes it still might get stuck in your eye, but super, super, super important wear safety glasses. These are a little dark for today's environment, but I have all our tools covered up, so dark is the way I'm going. Gotta unlock the back. Okay, so now we know that we have a square bottom. Um, if you're doing this outside, something that's super important right now is that you have this cut here on the bottom that is going to be bare wood. Outside, bare wood is not something you want, especially something that's going to be so close to the ground. It might be an inch and a half, two inches from the ground. So if you have some spray primer, like a spray can of uh, spray paint primer, uh, that's normally what we do, and we just spray the bottom. 
so that it's sealed, you know? So if you're doing it outside, just seal that up right now. And we are going to flip our piece because we are measuring to the long point, which is going to be on this side of the wood. So make sure you have a super sharp pencil. Uh, you don't have to have a fancy carpenter's pencil like I do. You can just have a round pencil or a mechanical pencil. Those are fine. I think they would make some pretty accurate marks. Um, so I'm just going to sharpen mine here. Nice and sharp. You really want it sharp so you get an exact number. When you're doing trim, it's really important that the number you measured is exactly the number you cut. So we have sharp pencil. And we're going to take our tape, go to the end of the board, and measure 82 and three quarters. Okay. And a nice little mark there. Bring it over here. And then we're going to take our saw and bring it to the 45 degree mark. And safety glasses. And that's it. So sometimes um, when I'm trying to get a super accurate number, I bring it to the saw and I make sure that my piece is a little far back from the blade so that I can cut, bring the blade out of the way, move it a little, cut, move it a little, cut. So you get exactly where you want. If you just put it on there and you're like, oh, that looks good, cut, you might cut it a little too short. And I'm serious, like a sixteenth of an inch, if you're putting this down on a hardwood floor and it's up, it's just not going to look great. So you want to make sure that you get it super good. So now we have our piece here and we're going to go back upstairs and install it. So I'll see you in a minute. All right, we're back. So we're back in our room where we are installing our casing. So we have our newly cut piece here. And um, we're just going to test it. We call it a dry fit. Put it down to the ground. And uh, line it up with the joint. It's perfect. Uh, sometimes it might be a little too long, and that's okay. Just go back down to your saw, trim a little bit off, dry fit it again until it's good. Um, so we are going to now take some glue. We use this Tight Bond 3. It's, uh, it's just a good glue. You will find it in the paint aisles at Home Depot. <laughs> Number one rule of contracting. You always have to print. It's great. <laughs> I'm such a friend. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, okay. He does that a lot. <laughs> oh, jeez. I walked in the door from cutting it. This piece. I saw a sign, a little note on the calendar. <laughs> and it said he was running to the store for garlic bread. I'm like, why are you walking to the store? Like, the truck was here. We have bread. Like, why would you do that? So fucking weird. Okay. <laughs> Back on track. <laughs> so, tight bond. Paint aisle. Get it. It's really important to um <laughs> oh, damn it. to glue your joints because over time they could open um and whatever so this glue is good and the three version is waterproof exterior interior you could use outside use it inside whatever so <sighs> Jesus Christmas where's my beer <laughs> so we're just gonna apply a little bit of glue here. He hid in that closet for so long. 
I was in here moving the bed, trying to get a new lamp. He's so sneaky. I could never sit for that long and wait for somebody to scare them. So I just put a little bit of glue, flatten it out, or, you know, smooth it out. Put, you got a little bit left on your finger. You just smooth it. Put it on the other joint, whatever, no big deal. So we're just going to put it on the ground. So now we're going to use a nail gun. Um, in the past, we've always used a compressor, which is an electric run machine that um, creates air that runs through a hose that's attached to your gun and the air pushes the nails out. <clears throat> Recently, in the last six months or whatever, year, I guess, um, we bought these battery powered guns. Um, this is a Senko is the brand. They're awesome. They, the batteries just run forever. We've literally trimmed entire houses with just these. And if you've been in this business, you've used an air compressor and a hose, you know how much of a nuisance it is with the hose attached to your gun. And when you have to move rooms, you got to move the whole setup if your hose isn't long enough. And you hear the obnoxious all day, like every 10 minutes or whatever, however good your compressor is. Um, so we like the battery ones. If you use the air ones, whatever, that's fine. Um, so we're going to start off with a brad gun is what we call it. And I just put inch and a half nails in it. They're like this. They're 18 gauge brad nails. And um, you could use hand nails if you wanted to. I don't personally recommend that. I think it would look kind of shitty. But if you're good with a hammer and a nail and you feel like getting some guns, go for it. So we're going to start with our brad nails on the top. I got a little step stool down here because I'm a little shorty. Um, line up our joint so it looks really good. You might have to pull it away from the wall a little bit. Um, that's all right. Make sure your joint is just nice and flush. Flush means that both, oh shit, both uh, surfaces line up with each other. Very smooth. So we're going to flush up the joint like that. And we're going to come in from the side on this first nail and just nail it like that. So the corners nail together now, which is really important so that your corner doesn't open up over time and look like shit. So then we're going to nail this side oh, into the jam. Um, and then we're going to go down with the brad nailer along the jam of the door, which is the wood piece that's on the door. This piece here. It's the jam of the door. Um, and we're just going to nail it in. And you can just line it up um, with your old cock line just so it matches the rest. And that's called the reveal, the reveal of your door. So we're just going to line it up like that and nail it. I don't know, every 16 inches is probably okay. couple of the brad nails in the jam of the door and now we're going to use a trim nailer um, which we also have a battery trim nailer totally recommend it and um, but they have them for the air compressor too and we're going to use two inch 16 gauge nails um, so we're going to put those on the outside of the casing the outside edge that will, if you can envision when your house is framed, there's framing here. So we're going to get those nails into the framing so that it's secure to the wall. So once again, every, you know, 16 inches. All right. That's good. Our joint looks good, so that's good. Feel secure. And now we're just going to caulk it. Um, we use a product called DAP. 
Dab. That's a dab. That's not a dab. I don't know. Um, white Alex is what we call it. So we'll just pop on the wall. This one has some shit in it, apparently. Sometimes when you don't use a whole tube, looks like there's actually dirt in the tip of this one. Um, so the tips get clogged sometimes if it's not brand new. So anyways, we cut it, now it free flows nicely down the wall, down the wall. We whistle while we work. Now you have a nice cock line there. And just run your finger along it to smooth it out. Really nice. Sometimes I use a nice wet rag. I got way too much on my finger this time. So, we'll just wipe it, maybe wipe it with a wet rag, so it's nice and clean. You know, alright. Nice, pretty. Now we're going to take the cloth again and do that on the inside. Once again, you can wipe it with the wet rag. Nice, smooth, pretty joint. You can do your joint a little bit. I like to just kind of rub it in there, you know. Wipe it with your rag. Gorgeous. Um, you can also fill the nail holes with a nail hole filler. Um, also in the paint aisle at Home Depot. I just don't have some right now. So just fill that. Let everything dry. Let the cock dry. Let the nail hole filler dry. The glue on your joint. Then you can paint it up and blame them. That's it. So yeah, that's all for today. I hope you have some nice new casing. From your pet damage or your kid damage or whatever it may be. And uh, thanks for being here. If you haven't yet subscribed, down below, subscribe to my channel. Find me on Facebook, Flip with Jade. And uh, yeah, peace out, guys.